Hi, I'm Brooke Hale with His Way Manufacturing HWM Components. Uh, today we have a special request for an order for a pump that uh, requires a different regulator. So we're going to show you how we do that process and how we change that and, uh, and get that set up for the customer's requirements. Uh, what we have here are common pumps that come in and out daily from our staging facility located in Greenfield, Indiana. Ten miles up the road in Fishers, Indiana, we have another warehouse that's 80,000 square feet where we stock and ship components as well. But we primarily bring those here, prepare them, get them ready for day of order, and they go out from there. So we're going to pull down a 200 series John Deere pump and uh, that's set up for a forestry application. And we're going to get that situated appropriately so we can help this customer and get him moving and digging back again faster and reducing his cost at the same time without sacrificing the quality of the component. I'll show you how that's done. Okay, so what we have here is a brand new component. This is a hydraulic pump for a John Deere excavator. Make sure that you read the registration form, you fill it out, get your pump registered. We have an industry leading two year warranty that no other manufacturer, whether it's Caterpillar, John Deere, OEM, wherever it is, whoever that manufacturer is, does not carry the same warranty. So, in order to Make sure that the investment that you made on the components you purchased and the savings are there. Don't sacrifice on the time that you spend on putting that pump or component on your machine. It's one of the most common mistakes people make. And uh, you end up with, uh, with more problems. So uh, what we do is we want to walk you through. We're going to bring the regulators here. We're going to bring them off, set them on here, and I'll show you how that process looks. But first I want to show you a cutout. Uh, image and diagram of a pump that we have here to kind of explain a little bit more about the regulator and what the quality of the pump does, what you should be looking for if you choose to have a rebuilt or if you choose to have a brand new one uh, exclusively through us in North America. So what we have here is I'm excited to show you kind of how this is brought together in the process. We have questions and questions that are coming in from the industry and, and other folks that are out there and why do we choose new over Reman? Reman's been there for 30, 40 years. It's just been the process of way that people do things and, uh, and why we choose brand new over Reman, as we've been involved in Reman in the past as well. Um, efficiency, uh, reliability, um, failure ratio. On Remans, we see 1 in 40. On brand new, we see 1 in 10,000. Uh, that's contracted with us and the manufacturers that are equipment uh, suppliers or original equipment suppliers across the nation and across the globe. So what we want to do here is, is show you uh, some of the pieces and components to what we have. Uh, this is a tandem pump and it has an EPR and sensor valve on this. So this would be a newer generation of uh, regulator and we're going to switch uh, newer generation, not this pump specifically but another model that's similar and it's a tandem pump as well, uh, to a standard regulator function or a normal type which would be a mechanical function. So what we have here is a cutout of all the components uh, to show you exactly where things are laid out and uh, in a tandem style pump or a Hitachi pump uh, <clears throat> and, uh, and what it looks like. So primarily in, in this area here is, is going to do the majority of your driving. On the front shaft you're going to have a coupling that would attach to <clears throat> the engine itself inside of a bell housing and uh, it would dampen uh, that initial startup and absorb some of that energy so that the pump doesn't drive directly off of uh, the energy source that it's coming from. Um, right here what we have is the pilot pump and we have a cutaway from that uh, to show you what we've got um, as it connects to the shaft and it's driven off of the main gears here. Inside this housing there's a primary shaft that comes from uh, P1 and as it goes to P2 it transfers through those gears to get the same energy as this pump works in one or in, in unison. Uh, here we have a cutaway of the bearings and uh, the bearing cones that we use are Japanese, uh, great bearing manufacturers. Um, and then in the rotary groups we use Kawasaki or Flutech. Uh, and then as we have 40 manufacturers that are involved, um, they put together uh, a great combination that gives us the ability to offer that two-year warranty. Inside here you have a horseshoe that begins and creates the swashing. You have your swash plates and main body housing here. 
Uh, this cutaway has been recessed or milled down so you can see uh, the actual plungers or the the true or the shoes for the uh, rotary groups. Um, inside here is what we'll be changing today, and this is a sensor-loaded uh, regulator valve. So <clears throat> over here we have an EPR, which is an electronic uh, sensor or a solenoid uh, that helps function and regulate that pump's pressure. Um, you have a couple main springs in here uh, to load and to operate with the computer so it can function properly on your machine. All of this has to come in unison uh, and all the moons align uh, to give you that essential power that you're looking for. Uh, anything that's out of line or that's not set up directly for your piece of equipment uh, could result in failure or damage. So please make sure that what you're ordering, what you're requesting uh, from one of our dealers or from our stocking facility uh, that those build codes are correct, that your machine application is correct, that nobody's changed it from the original time that the, the piece of equipment was purchased to something else, a new engine, a new um, hydraulic system, and uh, to make sure apples are apples and, uh, and you get the quality you're looking for. So we got the lid off here. We're going to reveal, pull this back. We've changed one of the regulators so far. And uh, so we're midway through the process. And changing a regulator takes approximately 15 to 20 minutes to change the physical unit. Um, we suggest at that point that you put it on a test stand and run it and uh, dial those regulators into what that machine uh, is expecting to, uh, to receive from the pump. Okay, so here what we have is uh, quality components, quality parts that we're putting back on to swap this out um, that are in our contract of supply. Uh, this is very important as a warranty is dictated as such. So uh, we don't suggest that you change anything on your own prior to uh, doing any work on this pump or that you open it or open any of our components, but that you would contact us first and we can walk you through those stages and get authorization prior to with the factories and the contracts we have uh, to make sure that everything falls in line with warranty. And again, that uh, investment that you made and the quality component that you purchased is reserved. So what we have here, is a regulator that we're working with. This is Flutech Kawasaki. So <clears throat> inside here, we have a brand new regulator where we're going to adjust this <clears throat> and show you what the differences are. So the regulator that we have is here is a standard type or mechanical type. Um, on the front, you have your highs and lows, front and back, uh, for your testing so you can uh, dial that regulator in uh, to the horsepower curve that you need for that pump. What we had on it was a sensor type as the model was different and, uh, and it received a, a different type of electronics that were on or made for this pump uh, application. So you still have your high and lows on the EPR or on the sensor type. Uh, regulator. However, the way that this works is there's a leg inside for the swash plates for this sensor to function on the electronics of your machine to let the computer know what's going on. So we're going to change this that we've taken off as we've had two of these on the pump that we've got and we're going to replace it with this for the special model application the customer is requesting. So here we have the pump open. Uh, it's ready to go. The drive housing is off. Uh, this is normally how they ship. The, the drive housings uh, generally do not go bad. If they do, call us, request that from us. Um, we can match it exactly to your bell housing and uh, supply those. We're the only ones in North America that can supply that, houses the stock, and supports dealer network uh, across the nation and across the globe. Um, and we'd be more than glad to, to talk to you about that. So. But what we have here is we've already switched one of the uh, regulators where we had two that were sensor type and we're removing both of them to bring them back to normal or mechanical type. So <clears throat> I'm going to show you how we pull this off, what it looks like inside, and how this application is going to change before it then goes to the test stand to be set up for the machine uh, that it's operating on. So what we're going to do first is remove the Allen bolts that we have here. Here there are four of them that are on this type of regulator. When we remove these, there's a certain torque spec for you to apply those back down. 
If you have an authorized dealership that's going to change these, please uh, refer to us on what those torque specs are so you can make sure everything goes back appropriately and uh, is set to factory specs. So now we have the top cap removed which is this piece here, which will be your anchor points for you to be able to move and pull your old pump out and put your new pump in. These anchors are removable from the cap itself. This cap is very important as it is a sealing piece to the top of the regulator. Once we remove that, because we're going to replace that onto our new regulator, we're gonna slide up the regulator, slide it out to get it past the leg and up past that leg so you can see where both of these spool valves, there is a recessed position where this leg of this uh, swash plate or horseshoe must lay inside there. If it does not, your regulator will not function. So with our cap taken off of the old regulator, we're going to also put it back onto the new regulator. These two pieces are anchor points for you to remove your old pump and put your new pump in. They are uh, separating pieces in two different units. Um, so you can leave them on or take them off. We suggest that you leave them on in the event that you have service or something that you're wanting to do in the future there. Um, after these regulators go on, the pump must go to the test stand to get the regulators dialed in. The way everything is in sequence with the way that the pump and the horsepower curve should go for the pump. The way this pump was set up originally was a sensor type which comes with a leg here that's connected to the horseshoe that uh, swashes the pump in and out. So we must remove this leg so this cap can fit down on the new regulator and uh, nothing is in, uh, in the way of one another. So operation runs smoothly. We're going to use a 10 millimeter wrench here uh, to get this leg off. There are two bolts here. You have to be very careful to make sure that you have removed these two bolts. In this application, this leg will disappear and you will not need a leg as we're going back to a manual uh, setup. So we're going to do that now. Okay, so on this horseshoe that attaches here uh, to the swash plate down at the bottom, as it's moving back and forth to get your swash plate online, this leg on the sensor type uh, uses that function with the electronics. So we're removing this piece and making sure that this horseshoe is aligning back into the spot where it was properly set at before. So this post at the bottom is a keyed post and it has uh, flat sides on both sides to make sure that you align it properly uh, to get back in um, that pump housing. So once that's snapped in there and you're secure on your horseshoe, we're going to then align the uh, servos or the pistons that are inside of the regulator to make sure that everything is as it should be. On one side of the regulator, your spool valve will not have pressure against that spring until it's aligned appropriately. On the other side, there will be a preload. So in order to line your four bolts up, uh, and get those back on appropriately, you have to push against that preload just a bit on the right side in this application to put your four bolts in and, uh, and get them installed. Prior to installing, please make sure that all the lock washers and everything that were on the previous bolts are on there. 
This will ensure that the regulator doesn't back off or you have a leak between the main body housing of the pump and the regulator. So we're gonna push down to get our preload on the one side of the spool valve and line that regulator up with the bolt hole. Now that we have the new regulator on here and uh, we're going to put these uh, bolts on where they align up and just make sure that we put them on there with our fingers and not not with a, uh, a torque wrench or any type of air tool uh, prior to uh, to getting them all buttoned down tightly. So once that's snug and that's situated securely, before we use another air tool on this, we're wanting to seal up these ports to make sure that we get nothing inside of them. Cap. It's important when you're putting the caps on that you have a sealed cap and not just a plastic cap. Cheap plastic caps can uh, leave area or room for contamination and uh, uh, water or um, condensation to get into the pump. So we want to seal that up and make sure that we have the proper caps. Now that we got our caps on and we're all sealed up and uh, our plugs are snug, we're going to use an air wrench. Uh, with a eight millimeter hex head and uh, and bring these back down to where they're just tight enough. And then to wrap it up, we'll use a torque wrench uh, to make sure that it's too spec and send it off for testing. So it's important to use a good torque wrench uh, prior to uh, any adjustments that you're making uh, to make sure that things are factory set. Um, it's good to have your torque wrench tested to make sure that everything is uh, correct on those specifications so you can match everything up correctly and you don't have any surprises. Eight millimeter, we have an adapter here from half inch to three eighths. We're going to go ahead and set this. So the pump's done and ready to go. Um, off to testing and then on to the customer. I uh, appreciate you joining in and uh, watching us or listening to us go over this and, um, and explanations on this. If you have any questions, give us a call. By all means, we have many people here that can help support you uh, in your application uh, that you may have that's a little different than normal. Um, I'm Brooke Hale with His Way Manufacturing. You can check us out online and uh, give us a call or give one of the dealers a call, and uh, we'll take care of you. Thanks, and have a great day.